It's our purpose to bring to bear the principle of common sense and rational discussion to the issues of our day. America was created at a time of great turmoil, tremendous disagreements, anger, hatred. There was a book written in 1776 that guided much of the discipline of thinking that brought us to the discovery of our freedoms, of our God-given freedoms. It was Thomas Paine's Common Sense, written in 1776, one of the first American bestsellers, in which Thomas Paine explained by rational principles the reason why these small colonies felt the necessity to separate from the powerful Kingdom of England and the King of England. He explained their inherent desire for liberty, freedom, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and he explained it in ways that were understandable to the people, to all of the people. A great deal of the reason for America's constant ability to self-improve is because we are able to reason, we're able to talk to each other, we're able to listen to each other, and we're able to analyze. We are able to apply our God-given common sense. So let's do it. Hello, this is Rudy Giuliani with Rudy Giuliani's Common Sense. Tonight, we're at the home of the McCluskeys, Mark and Patty. I think I know, you know who they are. They were confronted several, almost a month ago now, right, with, uh, with the possibility of being uh, murdered, having the house burned down and being raped and a horrible situation. I think you saw some of it with their... Um, holding the pe people off, and thank God it didn't happen, but it came very, very close. And then the unjustifiable really took place, and that is they've been, they've been put under investigation as if they committed a crime, and it is a sign of the sickness that abounds in this land today, a uh, sickness that has to be cured if we're going to return to the democracy uh, that we all grew up in and that we all love. It's a very serious situation, and I really would like you to pay very close attention. So this is uh, Mark, this is Patty. Please tell us just a little, you're both lawyers, and tell us how old you are, and just a few little things about yourself. The audience probably knows a lot about you, but just. Well, I'll say how old I am. It's impolite to say anything <laughs> yeah. about a lady. Of course. Um, uh, we're both personal injury lawyers. We've been practicing here in the city of St. Louis um, since 1986. Um, we both went to law school in Dallas at SMU. Uh, we moved up here on uh, April of 86. We've been on our own, working in our own firm together since uh, January of 1994. Uh, and our office is about three blocks away here in the city of St. Louis. And uh, we've lived here in this house since uh, 1988, 32 plus years now. And we've spent 32 years restoring this house. It was a, it was a, a problem. It was a derelict house with no heating, no air conditioning, no roof. No, I mean, it was terrible, you know, 48 space he heaters in the house. And it took us, and it's still taking us, years to, to complete. But. So uh, I, you know, I've gotten to know you and I've been through the house several times now and talked to you about it. This is obviously a labor of love. Oh, totally. yeah, absolutely. And this is a home. Yeah. You home. brought a daughter up here. Yes. You've been married here. Yeah. Your whole life is centered here. Yeah. And uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful home. It's, a, it's, it's a, a warm home and it's a gorgeous home. And it's something that, that is not just a house and not just a home. It's a, it's a historical statement of the genius of humanity. The, the, yeah. uh, the original builders of this house brought in uh, people like my ancestors and your ancestors and her yeah. ancestors from villages in Europe to do the, the woodwork and the carvings and the stone carving and created a monument to, to human genius. And yeah, and I, I might add, it's a, it's a real testament to Western civilization. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Which is at stake right now. Yeah, absolutely, exactly. absolutely. Which we're fighting for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Couldn't be any, any more symbolic. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not just, we're just merely temporary custodians oh, of, of this house. Yeah. And we want, our goal is to preserve this, uh, not just for itself, but as a symbol of the genius of mankind mm -hmm. and Western civilization. And this was, uh, designed to be a copy of a Renaissance house at a period of time when men's genius really flourished. And it's to preserve that kind of culture, mm -hmm. that kind of, of intellect that, that we have devoted the last 32 years, 32 to, years. to building, rebuilding this house and accumulating the, uh, the stuff in it. Well, God bless you. 
and, and God bless you for doing it, and God bless you for protecting it. And uh, I can't think of anything uh, more symbolic of the struggle that w we face right now, which is to preserve our way of life, which is under attack, and under attack by the very people who came here. So let's, let's get to that. So we'll start, you know, when it began. And that was on a Sunday evening. And it, and it really began earlier than that Sunday evening. That Sunday evening was June the 28th. Right. Um, but we had gotten a contact from our trustees of our private neighborhood here uh, days earlier that this uh, event was going to happen the Friday before. So and we should put this in context of what was going on in St. Louis. Sure. You already had had uh, protests and riots. Well, George, and as a result George, of George Floyd's death, or allegedly at the, as a result of George Floyd's death, there were riots in downtown St. Louis on the night of June the 1st and June the 2nd. Uh, the downtown areas were burned. Historic house was set on fire. Four police officers were shot. Captain David Dorn, who was working secondary employment, uh, was murdered. Um, uh, fires fires every, every place. Uh, Windows just, smashed. We watched the 7-Eleven. Yeah, downtown we did. All over, all over America, we watched it. Mm -hmm. and we also watched something else very significant, and that is the police taking little or no action mm -hmm. to stop it, which mm -hmm. to me is the mayor of America's largest city at one time, mm -hmm. was beyond shocking. Well, here's the thing that was the most impressive to me. We were watching a live TV feed from the room directly above where we're sitting here and from a helicopter. And we see the 7-Eleven, which is one of the few, you know, vital businesses in that part of downtown St. Louis, two blocks from the police headquarters. Um, somebody breaks out the front windows, no cops. Somebody starts looting and then the windows come out and everybody starts looting. They clean the place out. Then somebody starts a fire inside. The fire starts to burn and engulfs the whole building. We're watching this from a live feed for 30 or 40 minutes. And nothing was done about it. Building's completely engulfed in flames and then starts to collapse. No fire truck, no policeman. We were told later that the rioters had surrounded the, the, the street to keep fire trucks and police away. And we're thinking... The fire trucks can't... Drive through rioters? Did, did, did not. Not, and not I, my and, and we're saying, mm -hmm. holy, holy, you know what? Mm -hmm. If this comes to our house, we're all on our own. There's mm -hmm. nobody going to be there to protect mm -hmm. you. The cops aren't going to do it. The fire department's not going to do it. The, the, no one's going to protect us but ourselves. And so when we got the heads up from our neighborhood association that they were going to do this protest the Friday before it really happened, we staged fire extinguishers around the house because what they mm -hmm. like to do is burn things. And uh, we have some things here we wouldn't like to have burned um, and staged guns to protect ourselves because we also wouldn't like to get killed. Um, and then it didn't happen that Friday. But then. Well, let's, let's just go back for a moment. Your state of mind at this point is frightened. Oh, oh. God, yes. Uh, it's not as if this were in a neutral situation. Mm -hmm. You have been watching cities in other parts of America burning. You've, oh, absolutely. You, you, you had seen other, you've seen murders taking place. Oh, yeah. Four police officers shot here, one executed, really, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Captain Dorn. Uh, you saw uh, buildings burned down and places looted and the police non-existent, mm -hmm. almost as if it was uh, uh, permitted mm -hmm. by the city, if not invited by the city. And one of the most shocking and you things... Knew, and you knew you wouldn't get any help. Absolutely. You, and knew, one it. Of those you knew it, for sure. Absolutely. And one of the most shocking things you see in the videos of, of the riots in, in downtown mm -hmm. St. Louis and Minneapolis and everywhere else is that the rioters are taking selfies of themselves. They're not concerned about, about mm -hmm. retribution or, or getting arrested or going to prison. They're taking pictures of themselves committing felonies mm -hmm. up to the state of murder, as in the case of Captain Dorn, taking selfies of themselves and proud of it. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the state of our, of our government where you don't do crime and hope to get away with it. You do crime and advertise it because you know you're not going to have to pay the penalty. And were you aware of the groups that were involved, the, 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 the several groups that were involved, the Black Lives Matter and the Antifa and, and, in St. and Louis, their background? Yes, yeah. and, and we, we knew, uh, we didn't know as much about it then as we do now, unfortunately. Um, but we knew that Black Lives Matter was a uh, was an avowed race, a Marxist organization and, and um, that uh, the Antifa was, was mostly white. Uh, uh, anarchists and, and revolutionaries. There's an entity in St. Louis though, that we didn't know about called Expect Us. And Expect Us is a, a, a movement headed by, amongst other things, a young lady named Cori Bush and a man named Rashid Aldrich, who's a state representative. And Cori Bush has now just been elected our uh, United States representative for the first district of Missouri. But this organization proclaims publicly that they don't want peaceful protests, that they, they don't like that term. They have no intention of being peaceful. They want to be violent. They want to break laws. Uh, Rashid said the day after our event, first event, 
um, that yes, they knew they were going to have to break laws, and it's important to break laws in order to send their message. And these are the people that lead the local entity uh, that was confronting us. And the congresswoman is named? Cori Bush. And she was just elected to the United States Congress, I, I assume, to join the she, illustrious squad. Yeah, Tell exactly. Yeah, no, I, I saw a picture of her on her video jumping up and down because she had just gotten the call from one of the squads saying, oh, I'm part of the squad now, jumping up so and ba down. So ba basically this group uh, uh, represents some form of violent overthrow. Exactly. Yeah. Cori Bush, and I'm jumping ahead, but on the second event on uh, July the 3rd, when they came back to burn the house and to kill us, which is what they stated uh, to us is that they had every intention of coming to this house to burn it and to kill us. Cori Bush was standing outside the wall, 70 feet from here with a megaphone, repeating, chanting, you can't stop the revolution. The revolution. She, wins the, uh, she won the uh, Democrat primary for the first district of Missouri. And that's the same as winning the general election because there aren't any Republican voters in the first district of Missouri. So you're warned that there's going to be a demonstration and um, a dangerous one. You know that it could be uh, really dangerous because yeah. what, well, what you're seeing. Oh, yeah. And we get, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you what happens add? is, yeah, there's a, there's a nice area just two blocks from here where it's not downtown. It's a nice little area where um, it's coffee shops and restaurants and, and little, little shops, boutiques. And that whole area had been decimated too. It was all boarded up. It had been attacked and spray painted, you know, over the course of three weeks. And um, there was essentially probably 70, 80% of that, those streets were just boarded up. And just as an example, there's a pharmacy down there that we use two blocks from our office, block and a half from our office. It got broken into three times. And I was talking to the owner and he said, the, when the alarm went off the first time, I said, did you come down here and try to pr protect your shop? He said, no, I didn't want to get killed. He said, but the, the looters were in the shop for six hours and the police showed up 10 hours after the alarm went off. And, and they even pried up those doors. Big, you steel, know, those roll big doors. steel roll up doors. I think this would be a very good time to take a break. I couldn't believe we were evicted from our home that we didn't even sell. Those are the words of a homeowner, Deborah, when she learned she was the victim of home title fraud. It's a devastating crime that can cost you your home. And title fraud is not covered by insurance or common identity theft services. The only folks to trust that I know of to protect your home's title is Home Title Lock. Cyber thieves have discovered the titles to our homes are kept online. They forge your name on your deed, stating you sold your home, and they refile as the new owner. In Deborah's case, she didn't even know she was a victim until the eviction notice arrived in her mail. Home Title Lock protects you and your home by putting a virtual barrier around your home's title. The instant they detect tampering, they mobilize to shut it down. Go online to HomeTitleLock.com and register your address to see if you're already a victim and don't know it. Then use code Rudy, that's me, and sign up for 30 free days of protection. That's code Rudy at HomeTitleLock.com. Thank you very much for joining us. So we now get to the tw uh, tw 28th. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you were, you were, you were uh, going to have dinner with your daughter that night. That, that's right. And she, I'd asked her to stop off at the grocery store, which is one block south of here and on the other side of King's Highway to get some stuff from dinner. And as she was doing that, I heard the big commotion out on King's Highway. I heard the, the riot starting. And so I went out the front of the house, through the gate, looked down the street, saw the crowd uh, forming down on King's Highway in Maryland. So this is just so, this is south of you. South of us. But coming toward you. Well, coming right then, there was just staging. They weren't going okay, any. A large direction. number of people. Large, large crowd. And you heard Very, loud noises. I assume you couldn't make out exactly what they were saying. No, you heard loud noises. Loud noise. And so I called up uh, our daughter on the cell phone to see if she had gotten out of the store before the, the crowd blocked the road, and she said she had. So then I come back in the house, and on the issue of whether or not that gate was locked or not, this is really the first time this has been expressly said by us. Since I'd just been out there, I pulled the gate closed, and it locks automatically. There was no question that gate was So you was made closed. sure it was locked? I made sure it was locked. It wasn't ajar, it was, as the liars have said. <laughs> no, it was not ajar. It's, it's a, it's a, the way the gate's set up, and this is, this is significant. It's a point that everybody's overlooked. It's a set of bat wing. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Once one side opens on a hinge, the other side is staked to the ground permanently. It's got a lock 
that locks the stake so it cannot open. So anytime you see that, that passageway open with no gate visible, that can't happen unless the north half of that gate has been broken away because it does not open, okay? So, so, tell, us, so tell us what, you now talk to your daughter. Your daughter is coming back. You're getting dinner ready? At getting your dinner ready. I was gonna have but a- So you're gonna be outside on your, on your pat patio where you have a view of King's people, Highway. People will see some of this up on the screen where you have a view of the gate mm -hmm. that they eventually, or very quickly, are going to break open and yeah. come in. And so we, uh, we're kind of standing up on the porch, and the sound starts to recede. And we think they're going south on King's Highway. We think that's a good thing. Then the sound starts to build and so build and build. So you thought they went past you? We thought they were going the other direction. We thought they were going to go down uh, to Lindell Boulevard and then go west and then up to where the mayor's house is. Um, but instead, now the sound starts to build louder and louder and louder. We've got screaming and chanting and drum beats. And then we start seeing a trickle of people come past the gate. No cars going down Kings Highway. Kings Highway is always very busy. This was closed to accommodate the, uh, the, the rioters. That's right. The, the police had closed down the street to allow the, the protesters, uh, the rioters, the rioters right. to come I mean, by. I think, I think, I mean, I think at this point, yeah, there's no we, reason had, we were well it. past pro protest. You, you stopped using the euphemism. Uh, several murders, yeah. burning of buildings, um, but destruction all, of property, and, and destruction of millions of dollars of businesses. All of a sudden, King's Highway fills from wall to wall, as far as we can see, with an angry mob screaming, shouting, um, looking like they're out of control. And as they approach the gate on Kings Highway, we see that there's no security. Mm -hmm. We've got one private security guard that, that patrols these two streets, um, and he's not there. There is no city police out on the gate, and now we see hundreds of people uh, coming by, and we say, God, I hope they, they don't come in. All of a sudden, the gate bursts open, and just, it seemed like everybody- So you actually see it- yeah. Oh yeah. Pushed open. Oh yeah. Pushed through. Well- How long did that take? A second. Tenth of a second. How many the, people pushed through? It's seemingly everybody in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> I mean, it's just but a large number, large, large number of people. And, and there was again, you'll see some pictures of this. It was a very fat man that seemed to be once they got it open, guiding them through. That's right. He's, he's quite a large he's, man. He's Were they a, all, most of them, pretty large people. A lot of them, a lot of them uh, could <laughs> be fat watchers, you yeah. know. But there were also, there were also, you know, there were, there were several categories of people in, in retrospect. All I saw was an angry mob that I thought was going to kill me at the time. And what you were know, they yelling at this point? Well, they're yelling the, the, the standard slogans, Black Lives Matter, um, no justice, no peace, whose streets, our streets. But then they're also... And, the, and the, uh, the, 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 the insignia they had on that I, at least I saw from the... From the pictures you have are Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. You had uh, people in red with a hammer and sickle indicating communist, communist party, yeah. Black Lives Matter. And then there were people with a typical Antifa, Antifa, type Antifa black, black gear. stuff on, and then assorted other people. Yeah, and, and you know, there were people that were hardcore rioters. There were just, you know, mindless uh, hangers on, you know, a lot of young women that thought they were, I don't know, confused and thinking this was a social justice thing. And then a whole bunch of, of, of Black Lives Matter people, African-Americans in, in their in Black Lives Matter t-shirts. But all I saw at the time, I mean, this is all retrospect looking at the videos. All yeah, I you saw just at the saw people that, that were coming in there and, 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 and you thought they were coming to? Kill us. Yeah. Burn the house. No, no question. No question. Mind. And they were hysterical. I mean, you, you, you can't appreciate. And, and the flailing arms, screaming, spittle, even at a distance, you could see how, how, that they were how, how, did, how did you... Uh, and, how and did they, you feel, Patty? And, and they had I mean, how, what was the emotional just, reaction? It's that just you had? shocking because it just—it never occurred to me that they would come in the gate. It never. And then when they're coming in, where they're like falling in like lemmings and just coming further and further, and more and more people, and you just—you can't believe this is have, happening. Have you ever been frightened like that before? No. Never. How about no, you? Never. No, I just no. from the from the very get go, from the minute the gate was breached, I thought that no matter what we did, we were going to mm -hmm. end up dead. That there was just no way to survive that situation. Mm -hmm. That uh, that because we weren't going to just lay down and let him yeah, well, yeah why didn't you go run upstairs and lock yourself in a bed because i, I don't like burning in, in indoors okay? <laughs> you know exactly. some 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 uh, some idiot on a british tv show said why didn't you just go inside and film them on your cell phone and i said would you rather be have 300 people setting fires inside your house and yeah. killing you or would you like rather try to keep them on the outside and we had made a decision well, you earlier. Uh, you, uh, what you should have told them is uh, it, they would have burned the house down and 
Therefore, they would have burned the cell phone. And, and then and the, you wouldn't have any uh, footage of it. It, it. it was exactly my response. And she said, well, how do you know that that would have happened? I said, This wasn't well, Pierce Morgan, was well, it? Well, yeah, it yes. was Pierce Morgan's show, but it was, he, it was some other host that morning. Oh, they, they have people with his low IQ on the show <laughs> with him? Yeah, exactly. Oh, my goodness. We'll take a short break, and we'll be right back with the McCluskeys. Here where I live in New York City, you see people wearing these more and more as they commute. They're earbuds from Raycon. When commuting, you'll see them all over the city. But they're great to wear right now from home on video conference calls or when you're exercising or you're watching this video podcast or if you want to listen to music. You just put them in, hit the music, and I'm listening to Bocelli Conte Partero. You can listen to your favorite music. Raycon earbuds are really comfortable to wear because they connect by Bluetooth seamlessly and you're not having to untangle all these head headphone wires. The first time you listen to your favorite music, whether it's opera or something else, you're gonna be amazed at how good the sound comes from this little thing. What Raycon has done is truly amazing. You get six hours of playing time between charges. And when you pop them back into the box, it charges efficiently and very, very, quickly and they're not that expensive you're going to save a lot of money on these you buy these online by raycon.com slash rudy that's raycon.com slash rudy g get them now you're going to really enjoy them thank you Thank you very much for coming back, and we'll continue our interview with the McCluskeys. But I said, you know, if, if we went out there, you'd be you'd be attending my wake right now. I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be addressing the British so, Empire. So, you you at some point now stand up, walk over to sort of the porch there, the little porch yeah. where you get a better view yeah. of the people coming in, and you say something to them. First thing I said is, this is private property. I probably said You're unarmed at this point. Unarmed, I say, get the hell out of my neighborhood. This is private property. The words private property uh, inflamed them. And they, they became- That's really amazing. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, the contention here is that for maybe eight or 10 years, this is a planned communist movement. Yeah. yeah. Uh, eight, uh, uh, Black Lives Matter, the three people are uh, Marxist, following Marxist doctrine. The whole plan, if you understand Marxism, follows the burning of the statues, the changing of history. It's all Marxist yeah. doctrine. So they get upset when you say private yeah. property. And then they start That's the key to socialism. Right? Absolutely. No, no private property. And, and that's the basis of whose streets, our streets, right? The, the streets belong to the, the, uh, the, the masses and not to, there's no private property. And how dare you tell us where we can and can't be? They weren't that articulate. They just started screaming in greater uh, volume and flailing more. It was it was it was an out of control mob. Could you hear at that point what they were saying, or was it just indistinguishable, at, yelling at, and screaming at, and flailing? At, and at that point, my mind is, we're going to die. I've got to do something right. To take so what did out. you do? I had because we had staged the weapons earlier. I had an AR-15 right inside this door. I, I right, right in back of you right, right now, right behind me, about, about five feet over my my left shoulder right now. And I reached inside. I grabbed it. I went out on the way. Are you familiar with using weapons? Yeah, I, I grew up around guns. I've been okay, around so guns you know what you're life. doing. Um, Patty, on the other hand, <laughs> well, we'll get uh, to Patty in a minute. Know. Now, Patty, when he came in and got the rifle, were you still were you still there? Um, no, I think I walked right behind. I ran in to, to call nine one one. So you you came in, you went all the way across the, the house basically, uh -huh. and you called nine one one. And then we'll get back to what you did in a moment. Mm -hmm. So you came out with the rifle. Yep, and I stand out in the. And on you the go wing. on that porch again. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm standing there. Um, with my finger outside the trigger guard, safety on the rifle. So you're making it, it clear you have the safety on. Yeah. To show them that you're not anxious to uh, to mow them down. <laughs> well, I'm not anxious. No, in fact, I'm never you, anxious. You just to want mow them to go down. away. You want just, them to go away. I kind of thought that a rational human being, if they see a man um, who is shouting at them to go back, this is private property, and uh, is holding a, a rifle in his hands, the average human being might back up. But they did not. They kept coming closer. They kept coming more and more of them in. In fact, I saw a video. I wish I'd, I we probably have saved this somewhere. Some young uh, African American oh. ladies sticking their heads between the bars of the fence, saying, "Oh look, he's got a gun. Let's get in there." Well, if, the, po if the police that make? if the police aren't going to take action against them when they're beating the hell out of somebody or raping somebody, or why would you? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they had no expectation you were going to use that gun. My, my, my belief that they, fear they, they alone. Are, they are, they are, they are uh, completely confident, yeah. particularly in this uh, democratic city, mm -hmm. funded, we'll get into it, by George Soros in a large uh, amount, mm -hmm. that they're in charge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and my, my belief that somehow that the fear alone would keep them from killing us when they saw a weapon was immediately well, they, they had, Just like you were sure you're going to be killed, they were sure you weren't going to shoot. Absolutely. Well, in any event, you, you, you're there for a bit. Patty now di dis disappears. Yeah. Now, Patty, where do, you, where do you go? I went in the kitchen, called 911, and the lady on the other end of the phone said, uh, I said, they're, they're, they broke the gate. They're... they're Hundreds of people are coming through, and they said, "Well, what are their? Um, are they African American? Are they Caucasian? Are they um, uh, Hispanic?" And I said, "All of them." And then I said, "Well, that's not fair. There's probably no Hispanics in this crowd." And then she typed some things in. I could see we weren't getting anywhere, so I said, "I really have to go because I really have to go." And I maybe I may, they they have told me that I said I maybe I need to go get a gun. They so told you that. The, I've I've heard that from no I've heard that. From, but that's what the recording says. I don't right. remember saying that. And then I walked by my, I walked to the front where I, there was a big gun there, which I knew I couldn't touch. The big gun uh, was a rifle? Or a shotgun. A shotgun. Yeah. And I knew I couldn't touch that, but I knew pump, yeah, in the gun. drawer. An old fashioned? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The old Mossberg uh, 12 gauge, so. How about a frightening boy? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, but but you did not take that. No, I didn't. Because take you're that, not familiar with them. I, I know nothing about them. And, and what did you and, take instead? So there was. A, I knew that there was a, a a gun that was used in a case that didn't work, and I could it was just a little handgun, just a little tiny handgun. What, what kind of gun was it? And it was a Jennings or. What, what, can you describe the gun? Yeah, it was a uh, it's a uh, Brico Jennings 380 pistol. We'd use it in a lawsuit where I got to go to fully automatic, little tiny yeah, compact, big, subcompact. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thing. Okay. But and, um, still a gun. It's still yeah. a gun. Yeah. It was once at any rate, but it was non-functional at that time. But, and you knew it was non-functional. I knew it was non-functional. Um, and uh, so, if you knew it was non-functional, why'd you take it? Well, I, I, I thought well, I saw people coming toward Mark before I even left. I saw them when he said that business about private property that people were coming up toward the fence to, to toward him, and I thought he's not going to be able to handle this himself. Okay, I called nine one one. And um, and then I went out the front. Well, before I went out the front door, my daughter was standing there in the entry hall, and she said, she actually fell on the ground because she you could look. Uh, she just like she passed out, and she because you could look out the front gate and see all these these rioters out there. And she said, my parents are both going to be killed right now. She said that. And she, she said that she, out loud. She, and was she, she said, saying it uh, to you or just saying it? Um, or couldn't you tell? Oh my God, my parents are going to die right now. Both my parents are going to be killed. And then she um, went upstairs. I didn't know this. I just knew. Um, and then um, she told me she went upstairs and hid behind a sofa. Um, and, then what, and what did you do? Uh, I went out front with a gun. And, and, what, um, and, and you went on. You have a, you have a, a large uh, entrance pa patio. Mm -hmm. uh, patio. Terrace, yeah. In Brooklyn, we would call it a stoop. Oh, okay. <laughs> the terrace. Stoop, the yeah. terrace. Yeah. So you, you stood there for a, a bit. With the gun, yeah. But then you went over to the grass at some point. Uh, yeah. There do you was... remember exactly the timing, or is it just kind of? Hazy? I, I, I don't know the exact. Do you remember timing. what you said or what they said? Well, they're screaming at me about. Like, we're gonna... um, and I know the language here is very difficult, but I, I think we need to Bitch. hear it to understand the state of fear that you're in. Kill you. We're gonna rape you. You. We're Talk about you. You. Yes, me. And we're gonna take that gun and shove it up your cunt. You're a cunt. You're a bitch. You're. Um, a, Lots of things, lots of, and they were coming closer toward what, me. What made you go from the, the entrance porch to the grass where you were? How, how far from them uh, ultimately? Ten feet, eight feet. Eight feet, ten feet. Uh huh. Would you yeah, say about that? And they would, they would keep yeah. coming toward you, and then I did, and they were coming toward at such a rate that that I was moving the gun like, like about, this, saying everybody. You think football stay like about back. three yards? Yeah. Three yards, four Two, yards, five yards. It's it's uh, it, I, it's probably. So you're a football fan, right? No, I'm not a football. Oh, you're not. Fan, well, but... I think football when I do distance. <laughs> yeah. It's so about th about th uh, well, it's, a human body, a, a, a human body. It, it's it's. I think it's probably 28 feet or something from our from our low wall here to the sidewalk, and she was more than halfway to the sidewalk from the wall. So 12 feet. Yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. And they were they were coming towards her when I first saw her out there in feet. front of me. 12 feet. Yeah. And you had a gun that doesn't work. Yeah. No, but yeah. I thought that they thought that it would. 
Yeah. But they were yelling at you. It did. It, it, they, they still kept coming. But I thought they I was yelled you. They, 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 they said they're going to rape you. Yeah. Did they say they're going to kill you? Kill you. Kill. They said they, what else? They take over your house. They did. They. I think that it took. By the time you came out to the porch, they said that we're going to we're going to take the house, um, and I'm going to be sleeping in that room. You have to understand. There's a lot of screaming and yelling. So right. You know. You right. might. I know. Only we, be we're we're going to listen so, to some of the tape. Yeah. And you can make out some of the uh -huh. some of those words mm -hmm. you can hear mm -hmm. you can't hear them in complete context but or, your recollection is basically they were threatening to kill you rape you take your house and we're, we're your taking, dog and well they said the dog was barking so they said we're going to kill that you're good kill your dog we're going to come in there and that's going to be my room i'm going to be sleeping in that room that's i'm going to be getting my shower in that room we're, we're taking this place and um and um and what did you do while they were while they were doing they just you just held the gun I held a gun. I also you, took my you, keys out with me to the car because I pulled the. Oh, uh, of course, pulled, yes. What, and what did you do with the keys? Behind me, so that it was locked, um, and I and I hit the, the the alarm bell. I kept hitting the alarm on the on the truck, the SUV, so that it was loud. I thought it was going to get some attention, and somebody else. You thought you might get some out. help. It's yeah, what, like from somebody else or the police. Somebody, anybody, so yeah, a neighbor, a security guard, anybody. And um, at some point, I looked down and I saw the security guard in the whole crowd of people, and he wasn't even getting out of his vehicle. He was kind of like hiding. He was he was sitting in the street. He was in his vehicle, but he wasn't coming forward. He he wasn't. So you two him. were literally in suit on your own. Absolutely, oh, absolutely. And uh, you kn you knew that uh, the police that you paid taxes for weren't showing up. That's true. Uh, the security guard, I assume you were paying for, was hiding in his car. Yep. And it was the uh, the two the two of you and you and you had a daughter to protect as well. So now you're on the lawn. You don't realize at first that she's outside. No, I had no idea. And w what happens? You see her on the lawn. All of a sudden, she appears in front of me, um, and she keeps. You see your wife yeah. closer to them than you are. Yeah, absolutely, and I've got a wall between me <laughs> and a hedge, so I can't get there in a hurry. And I also don't have a clean line of fire because if somebody she's got people all around her now, and so if a shot goes off. I can't do anything because she's between me and the crowd. So what? what so you uh, explain your reaction to, to seeing her there. Well, I thought I thought <laughs> that she had placed herself in a very dangerous situation. I had to well, do something did. about it right away, and I don't well, even. She did place herself in a very dangerous situation. <laughs> yeah. And so I came through the house and out on the front Immediately? porch as fast as I could. Were you very worried? I was. I was terrified. I. I, I was. If I, mean, I, I know it's hard to recreate these things. I've been in situations that are heavy emergencies and. You know, I get half the facts wrong, but do, do the best you can. I, I was probably doubtful that she would still be standing up by the time I got through the house oh my on the God. front porch. Mm -hmm. And but you I, wonder, what's my wife doing there? Yeah, yeah. And first of all, I know that the gun she's got doesn't work because, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. I also know that in the real world that uh, if she'd had a functioning gun and it just had a safety on, she wouldn't know how to turn it off because she didn't know anything about guns. Um, and so, so she was really virtually defenseless except for her bravado. Yeah, that's it. She she believed that by having something that looked like a functioning firearm in her hand, that would have enough deterrence well, to keep the crowd away. Maybe maybe it actually did. In a Probably way. did. Maybe, maybe Probably it did. did. You never know. But you can't you can't figure these things out at the time. No. So you are extremely upset. Yeah. Very worried. Yeah. Convinced that she's going to die, you're going to die, your house is gone and who knows what's going to happen to your daughter. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So you run out. I run outside with a gun. With a gun and a and now we're standing side by side in the front porch, and I, I, as we sit here today, well, it gets a little bit. We've gone through this. It's very, it's very difficult for you to remember how you actually came back together yeah, again. I, because I mean, when you come out, you're on the, I'm you're on, on the porch. She's on the grass, mm -hmm. 12, 15 feet away from these animals, right, yeah. yelling and screaming at you. Yeah. yeah. You hear what they're yelling at that point? Oh now? yeah. Oh yeah. Had you heard what she was hearing? Uh, I had I could not hear it from up on the porch. But, but when you just, got down there, you oh, could yeah. hear we're going to rape you. We're going to kill what, you. What we're going to burn the house. I, I just, but by the time I got out on the porch, um, I do distinctly remember the guy saying, "We're going to kill you." And after this is over, that's going to be my bedroom. That's where I'm going to take my shower. That's where I'm going to have my dinner. Uh, I remember them saying they're going to kill the dog. You, I, you, do, I mean, do you do you know that uh, one of the one of the tenants, uh, one of the principles of Black Lives Matter in their manifesto is. That they have a right to claim uh, your property. Oh yeah. So this may, may very well have been an exercise of one of their uh, guiding principles. I think that probably goes back to a guy named Karl Marx. Oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but it's right there in writing. Yeah. Uh, a lot of our 
political figures and people who give them money don't bother to read that. But I mean, the, the whole concept of whose streets are streets, right? I mean, that's, yeah, and, that's and this, your and basic, this is my, I can take this house. Yeah, mm -hmm. basic tenant. But course, kill you. We weren't philosophizing at that point. No, no, you were, you were fighting we, for your life. We weren't engaging in, in historical I got it. You know, referencing. Yeah. We were just trying to, I don't, know some, what, I don't know what she was thinking, but I had no expectation that we would survive that day. We would put up a battle and, and die in flames. That was what I anticipated when I hit the front porch.